We are looking live at Toronto this morning, the morning after the city picked its new mayor. And the new mayor is Olivia Chow, who won last night's by-election to replace the former mayor, John Tory. And there, as we look at scenes from the headquarters last night, the victory party, the victory speech, and this morning, uh, the work begins. Toronto's mayor-elect Olivia Chow is with me in studio. Welcome. It's good to see you again in a whole new capacity. Congratulations. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. I'm just thinking, we were just talking in the commercial break about the ballot in Toronto. 102 candidates, including you. So you have defeated more than 100 candidates to become the person who holds really one of the most politically important jobs in the country. How's it feeling this morning? Uh, excited. Very grateful, feeling honored to be given this opportunity and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll need the energy. The, uh, the list that of to do's, you have energy. <laughs> we know that from the years, but the list of to do's is long. The challenges are great. The changes in Toronto have not been in, in the direction many have wanted, and you've acknowledged that over the campaign. I, I want to jump right in in terms of one of the main issues, and that's money. For so many, we're talking today, we just got the inflation numbers out. They're down a little bit, but obviously people know the cost of everything is going up. And one of the things that you said in your victory speech last night, you acknowledge how tough it is these days. It's harder to get by. In Toronto, it's going to be tougher if taxes go up, property taxes go up. And people are afraid of that. You've said they'll go up modestly. What is the plan? Well, we should talk about the plan in March of next year because... Um, Mr. Tory, the former mayor, uh, had just given the city, uh, all the homeowners, a 7% tax increase before he left office. And unfortunately, there is a big budget deficit. Yeah, more than a billion. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. more than a billion, yeah. So what my first priority is to look at all the affordable housing and the other housing uh, that is already ready to go. They are ready in terms of uh, they have the land, they have the building, they have the plans. Um, the building permit just needs to be approved. Mm -hmm. So they're stuck at City Hall for the last two years. So my first priority is to break that apart and say, come, come on, let's cut some red tapes and get it going. Get some of those things. Yeah, so I'm approved all these affordable housing and all the developments that are ready to be built because everyone believed that we need to build housing. So it makes sense to look at the lay of the land before you make any, you know, you know, firm announcements. But, I mean, your opponents in the campaign were talking about, I mean, you did acknowledge there would be tax increases. They said, you know, it'll be 20%. It will be 40%. Are they right? No. It's campaign talk. No. Scare they're tactics? absolutely wrong. They're, they're wrong. Um, I've said it's a modest tax increase. Can't give a number because, you know, Heather, we don't know what is the interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. And Bank of Canada have been trying to battle the inflation. So they just upped the interest rate to 4.75, it was 4.5. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, what, nine months from now? We're talking about March of next year. How do we put a budget together? Look at what we need. TDC needs fixing, right? We need a faster, a more reliable For service. audience, that's the transit yeah, service oh, there's a in transit the city. That's service. exactly that's right. right. So where is public transit building, housing, uh, dealing with the environment? That's very important, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of services that needs to be um, looked at. Uh, recreation, there's a park, Before we police. Get the number. Absolutely, but right? How then, how are you going to get the rest of council to agree? Megan was reporting earlier. I mean, you know, you've been away from City Hall for some time. You know there are some really strong fiscal conservatives on City Council. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and we don't even have a number with which to work with. How are you going to get the rest of council to agree to these kind of big expenses, to tax increases, which have not been the way in Toronto for the past 14 years now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right. Um, as you know, I had 14 years of city government experience, 10 years in the budget committee, and I've also been a member of parliament for eight years. So I have a lot of experience in public office, and I do know how to work together with other folks, whether it's Mr. Harper's conservative or at City Hall. It's always about working together across the aisle, find the common ground, and then look at how we could get there. 
Okay. And, and sometimes it's a bit of give and take. Because if you think about it, um, all the city councils, people, whether they voted for me or not, vote for me, they love this city. Toronto is the financial center of Canada. And in order to build a strong Canada, you need a livable and affordable and healthy Toronto. And right now, Toronto has some problems and we are calling on other people, people from other cities to help us out because our homelessness, uh, the lack of affordable housing, it's, it's severe. And that's happening to, to all the cities across Canada. When you talk about partnerships and working and building consensus. Obviously, council is key in that, but so is the premier. And uh, Doug Ford, as you well know, again, maybe you'll, you'll point it down to campaign talk, but he was not complimentary during the campaign no. and said you'd be an unmitigated disaster for mm -hmm. Toronto mm -hmm. if you were elected. The statement that we've had from the premier last night was uh, more uh, was tempered, let's say. While we're not always going to agree on everything, he wrote, what we can agree on is our shared commitment to making Toronto a place where business, families, and and workers can thrive. So as you say, share love of Toronto, a recognition that there are problems and there need to be solutions. But you are so different from uh, Premier Ford and your approaches and your philosophies. How are you ever going to work with him? Well, Heather, let's start with the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is still the same. And he called me last night and we talked about common ground. He and I uh, was in the same campaign together for eight months, so we got to know each other quite well. It's true, back in 2014. Uh, absolutely, and, and when you go on campaigns, there were, there were so many debates. Almost every second night there was another debate, so we got to know each other. And yes, we do there love the city. There is common ground? Absolutely. What? what did you discuss last night that you well, think Well, we didn't go into point. all okay. details, but for, for number one, we both agree that we need to build housing, right? And that's a priority because Toronto is growing. As you look at all the immigrants coming into Canada, they are picking major cities, Toronto being one of the key ones. So we need to build housing to accommodate all the newcomers coming into our city. That's a priority, no matter what your political stripe. If that is the goal, how do we get there? How do we share that kind of, the processes might be different, but I'm sure we can find some common ground. Really, at the end of the day, politics is what's possible. How do we do it together? And I think if the people speak up and the people are speaking up saying, look, make life more affordable, make City Hall care about us a bit more and let's create more a affordable, better affordable, caring and safer, the vision that you have put forward. Exactly. You'll need Doug Ford as a partner, as you say, in terms Absolutely. of giving you some of the fin financial levers potentially to do the things that you're doing given yes. the budget shortfall that you're facing. Um, we'll have to carry on the conversation, I hope, in weeks to come once you take over on July the 12th. But I do want to ask you one thing. You've been away from a while, for a number of years now. And one of the things that I think has changed uh, in the past year since, since you left the political scene has been the level and the volume and the nature of political discourse. Mm. And I think you just you just need to look at your campaign Twitter feed this morning to see the kinds of reactions, some very favorable to your being elected, but some very angry, very ugly. Um, and from talking to politicians and notably female politicians, it's a very unpleasant part of the business now. How are you going to deal with that? It's okay. It's all right because there are more that we share with each other than what divide us. Let's, uh, let's not stand for hate, um, but I am a firm believer if we care for each other better, then you, ha you create social conditions where people are less likely to feel alienated, less likely to feel excluded. If you open City Hall up to say you too can have a voice no matter what your voice might be. It might be disagreement, but let's hear each other. And I believe we can create a structure, a political structure that allow these voices, not the hateful one, but the ones that are different to connect with each other and share the experience and share their love of Toronto with each other, for each other. You've spoken about um, 
your second chance. Yes. You shared your very compelling personal story again. Congratulations. We will see your second chance and we'll see what it's like to lead so many years in opposition. It's a whole new Olivia Chow as mayor elect. And Hall, look forward to the next conversation. Thank you for today. Thank you, Heather. Appreciate it. Toronto's mayor elect, Olivia Chow, in our studio, moving off to a multitude of other interviews today. So thanks again. <laughs>